So Adobe's just dropped an update into Lightroom and Camera Raw. Right now, I'm gonna show you my five favorite features. We're gonna start with the first one, which is Denoise. This one I've covered more in depth in a separate tutorial, so check that out in the links. So when you're shooting in low light and you have to crank up the ISO like I have here, this is 102,400 ISO on the Sony a7 III because I was doing a nighttime shot on the roof and we can see when we zoom in, there's a lot of noise, which is that grain. We can get rid of this easily now under the develop module, scroll down to the detail tab, and you'll see our normal noise reduction is here. It's now called manual noise reduction. But we have a new one called Denoise. This is an AI filter. We click on it. What it's going to do is it's going to bring up the dialog box and watch what it does. It's pretty amazing. It has one setting, the amount, and usually around about the middle is going to work quite well. I'm just going to click Enhance. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a brand new DNG file. It can take a little bit of time. And look how clean this is. It's really amazing. So this is with the denoise. Let's go back to the original. So there's the original. There's denoise. Let's zoom into 100%. Okay, here's the original. Here it is with the old noise reduction. And here it is with the new denoise. Second new feature, two new masks have been added. A very useful feature is some new masks. So if we go under the masking here and we choose the person, so we now have facial hair. So if we create this mask, now we can, you know, lighten or darken a beard, change the color of it. All right, and another one that we have is works on clothes. So it'll detect the people. And if we look at, we can choose the clothes. It doesn't work too well, I've kind of found, but I'll show you how to fix it. We just hit create mask. And what we're gonna do is just add, grab a brush. Then we can subtract. And once you've selected the clothes, you can do things like change the color or, you know, do different things like that. My third favorite feature, and maybe this might be my favorite in some ways, we now have the ability to use curves inside of the masks. And this is useful not just for tonality, but also for doing amazing things with color. So let's choose a mask. And let's do something like a linear gradient. So let's drag this out across here. This is the Napali coast in Kauai, Hawaii. I shot this from a helicopter. So here's all the adjustments, but now we have the ability to use curves, which will give us more precise adjustments in these areas. We can target specific tones. Now I've got a whole course I've done on curves, if that's interesting to you. Now, one of the cool things about curves though, is the ability to go in and use colors. And there's before and after. So I'm not trying to get a masterpiece here. I just want to show you how you can go in and you can now use curves on all of these adjustments, which just opens up a whole world of new creative possibilities. So this next one is a big one for people that do any form of compositing, astrophotography, focus stacking, anything like that. When you work with multiple images, we can now stack multiple smart objects inside of Photoshop. If you're like me, you like to start in Lightroom and then move photos into Photoshop where you can do compositing and different things. The best way to do that is a smart object. Previously, you had to open them individually as smart objects. Now I can select more than one image and I can open them as layers as smart objects. So let's right click and then we're going to choose to edit in. So here's the old open as a smart object. Now we can open it as smart object layers in Photoshop. We have these smart objects, so if we wanted to do, say, something like compositing. The nice thing about this is if I double click any of these layers, so any of the adjustments that I applied inside of a Lightroom are still here inside of Camera Raw. Same with all the layers. So if I wanted to warm it up or whatever I wanted to do with it, obviously I would need to clean up the selection and work on shadows and stuff to make that a composite, but I think you understand what we can do here. And number five, last but not least, here's actually a roundup of the rest of the new features. So one of them we have here is a bunch more adaptive presets that includes things like beards and different things like that. And you can see all of those there. They now ship. A second one has actually come over from Camera Raw into Lightroom are these dots. 
Notice how some of these are lit up a little bit more. These are the ones where adjustments have been made. So if it's great, nothing has been adjusted. So we can actually just click on the eyeball to hide or show that adjustment. And notice up here too, you can see the little dots indicating adjustments have been made. Another welcome addition is if we look under history, you can see that the mask moves are now included in the history states. And finally, if you want to export to Photoshop, you can use the version. So just go into the settings and you'll see Photoshop version. And there's the public beta and there's the shipping version 2023. Now, when I choose to edit in, it's going to show that version. So I'm curious what was your favorite new feature? Let me know in the comments underneath. And the one that gets the most comments, I'll do a more in-depth tutorial. So drop your vote into the comments there. And by the way, if you're new, welcome to the cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. You won't miss any of my videos. And if you got any value out of this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.